Welcome to the Ludix Aviation Flight Series from the ground up. Okay, got some explaining to do here because there's a lot of things that have changed. The first thing that's changed is this series is not going to be called From the Ground Up. My idea with that was I had a student, a brand new student at the time, that uh, I was going to record a private pilot series going from zero hours all the way through to getting the PPL and showing you the kind of journey through that. And unfortunately, me and the student didn't get to finish his PPL together. There was a ton of delays throughout uh, the training process and it took way longer than both of us anticipated. We got to a point where I was going to be moving on. In a previous video, you may have seen me kind of turn to that wall and kind of look at that wall and there was a different cockpit poster on the wall than there is there. Fortunately, not going to be able to continue Seth's training for reasons that if you want to get into it, let me know in the comments and maybe we can make a video about it. Uh, that endeavor isn't gonna to come to fruition. I'm not gonna go into detail, but this means I'm still here. If you're a channel member and you've not seen the post that I made for the channel members, I let the channel members uh, in on a little bit more information. So I've spoken to uh, this student. They're absolutely over the moon with me repackaging these videos uh, into a different series. It's not gonna be called From the Ground Up. It's gonna be a different series. So we're gonna take uh, the student, Edwin, private pilot student. We're gonna take him from zero hours all the way up to his solo and you're going to come along on the road. So I'm excited to bring you this. It's a good series. I will say that these videos were recorded way back starting in January 2021 and edited way back then as well. Hope you enjoy it. If you do, please leave it a like. If you're not subscribed to Ludix Aviation, get yourself subscribed so you don't miss the rest of the series. Okay, let's get on the road to flying solo. Welcome to the Private Pilot Series, The Road to Flying Solo, brought to you by Lou Dix Aviation. This is Edwin, and over the next number of weeks, we'll be following his journey to achieving a huge milestone in aviation, the first solo. I'm Lewis, Edwin's guide and your host along the way. There will be ups. Yeah, that's how it's done. Yeah. That's how it's done. And there will be downs. I think you're looking inside too much. I think we need to have our eyes more outside because I don't think you're using the horizon much as I want you to. And as is the norm here at Ludix Aviation, you will be entertained. Remain clear of my propeller. I'm commencing engine start. So sit back and join us on the road to flying. Well, so this is the official flying day with Edwin. Ground reference maneuvers. Quick question on camera for you. Why do you want to be a pilot? This is my passion. This is what I've been doing for the last, what? years of my life and I'm finally, finally done fixing them. I want to fly them. <laughs> you don't, I like that. You don't fix them, you want to fly now I have the time for it. Yeah. Nice. I like that. In the case of an emergency, right? We exit this way, the only door we got. Mm -hmm. um, follow instructions. Exit as safety as possible at that point, I guess. Right? Absolutely. You probably want to say, you know, how to use the door, unlatch at the top, pull that open while you're flying. Don't touch the controls if you're talking to a traffic control please don't speak okay nice and tight that went through the seat belt right yeah uh, fuel selector verify fullness parking brake so i guess i'm gonna set it there you go uh sicker breakers are all in already verified on the perfect three's flying there we go carburetor heat is off battery master alternator on so there goes our fuel. Yep. Fuel. I uh, visual. Yep. Any condition lights on. Fuel pumps on. We can hear it. Hear it. Yep. A uh, mixture rich. And primer throttle a quarter inch. Clear propeller area. Clear prop. <coughs> let, me, let, me, let me just do mine. Yeah. So. Remain clear of my propeller. I'm commencing engine start. So magnetos, magnetos and ignition start. So just remember left hand on the key, right hand on the throttle, start it, get it to a thousand RPM, go back to the checklist. Thank okay. you. Just move that microphone just a little bit closer to your mouth, just so I can hear you a little bit better. You hear me? There yeah. we go, that's better. Okay, so transponder is set. Yep. 1200. Perfect. A it is and AWAS. So we're going to pick that up. There you go. Flip the switch. Flip the... There you go. 
and then it will start zero, listening to the exactly. ATIS. So, Temperature niner, dew point two. I need you to get three, the, zero, three, uh, the the weather information. Just write it down as you think is logical, and then I'll let you know if it's correct. Okay. Clearance delivery is available on ground control frequency 121.4. And advise on initial contact, give ATIS information, Lima. Orlando Executive Tower, ATIS information, Lima, sky clear. Temperature niner, dew point two, out temperature three zero three one. Orlando Executive Tower, ATIS information, Lima. Visual approach, runway seven in use. Clearance delivery is available on ground control frequency 121.4. Wow. Feedback all runway, hold short instructions and runway assignments. And advise on initial contact, give ATIS information, Lima. <laughs> Three, zero. Visual approach, <laughs> runway seven. We got use. something. Oh my <laughs> god. B visual approach, runway seven in use. Hello, I love runway activity. seven. Runway seven. Right. Airport. So you can ride that. Delivery is a bit. Sky clear. Temperature niner. Right, it's point clear. Two. Uh, sky clear. Three, zero, and three, the only one. other thing was the uh, visual approach. Uh, runway the wind. Three four zero at seven. Caution, what is he at seven? What did he mean? That's seven knots. There's the wind speed, because of course any time you get wind, like we said on the ground, uh, in, the, in the FBO, uh, you're going to get a, a direction and a velocity. Do I go ahead and put 340 here? Yeah, yeah, why not? Why not? And then just for, just so that can shut up. So that's where the wind is at. Uh, exactly. Our altimeter, it's 3031, right? There we go. 3031. That needs to be within 75 feet of airport elevation, which it is. Airport elevation here is 113. You can see how quickly you have to be to write all this stuff down instead yeah. of it. Like, you, you'll get quicker. Okay. But at first, it's like, oh, what? First, you gotta understand what, what? they <laughs> <laughs> Yep, we're gonna start that taxi. Uh, first things first, it's testing the brakes. So e each time for the brake test, just roll forward, use both brakes, and then you'll give me controls. I'll do the same thing, and then I'll give it back to you, and you can taxi out. So departure briefing, uh, usually it's an emergency brief, um, So, but we'll, first thing we'll talk about is what we're going to do. Uh, what's the rotation speed that we use? 65. 65, so we're going to roll it up, 65, nice rudder control, pull back nice and easy, let it come up. What's VY? That's 75. 76. 76. Get it right. Uh, 76 will climb out there. Just make sure once we lift off that we don't hold that nose too high. We'll get it down to 76 knots, kind of eyes outside, eyes inside, kind of scanning. And of course the best indicator for if the wings are banked or whatever is to look outside. Emergency briefing. Obviously if anything happens I'm going to take control. But here's how the briefing goes. While we're on the runway, if anything happens while we're on the takeoff roll and we're still on the ground, we're going to uh, bring the throttle back. We're going to apply brakes, we're going to slow down on the runway. If we can get off, we will. If we get, if we have to stay on the runway, we have to stay on the runway, it is what it is. We'll tell tower what's going on. If we take off, if we're off the ground, we'll be below a thousand feet and we've got runway ahead of us, we'll use runway ahead of us. Uh, best glide speed is 73. If there's no runway ahead of us and we're below a thousand feet, we're going to scan 30 degrees left, 30 degrees right for the best place to land. In all honesty, coming off seven, it's the lake at the end of the runway. There's nowhere else to land. Um, so it's going to be cold if that happens, yes. but you can swim, correct? We're going swimming. We're going yeah. swimming. Uh, we'll cuddle afterwards if yeah. we need to, yeah. if you yeah. want. Uh, if we're above a thousand feet, that's the only time we're going to attempt to power off 180. We're going to swing it back around at 73 knots, no flaps until we make sure that we made the runway. And uh, we'll tell Tower what's going on. That's basically the briefing, you'll get used to that. Cool man, uh, let's do pre pre takeoff checklist and get this show rolling. We're going to go into ground reference maneuvers. So pre takeoff flap set, mixture of rich. It is rich. Yes, indeed. Fuel pumps on. Do it. Find the lights on. Transponder altimeter, we well, set it already. Yes, indeed. We're going to take off 65, 76, 700 feet. Uh, we'll make a left turn towards the northwest. Tower check 32042. Holding short, runway 7 Alpha 7, ready. 32042, Orlando Executive Tower, on course for runway 7 Alpha 7, clear for takeoff. Cliff takeoff runway 7 Alpha 7 on course approved for the Cherokee 32042. Final is clear, just give you one last look over that way. Beautiful, huh? No one's over there, perfect. So at this point, yeah. heels on the floor? Heels on the floor. You don't need any more brakes on the runway. Runway 7 on the ground, we're on the right runway. Yep. That's a good thing, get on the center line. Start accelerating. Uh, just, just line yourself up on that center line first. Kind of bring yourself to the right. There you go. And then heels on the floor, double good. checking, seven, seven, looking good, let's roll. Let's roll. Full throttle. Full throttle. All the way, all the way, all the way. There you go. Beautiful. Keep that rudder. A little bit more left, there you go. 
Airspeed's alive. We've pulled. Yep. I just pull, there you go. Welcome to the sky. Wow. Nice. That nose is coming high. Just push that nose forward, get that 76 knots. You're going to have to push down to get that 76 knots. If you need a trim, you can do. Just trying to get this. Get a feel for it. Yeah. Get a feel for it. There we go. 700 feet is what we're waiting for. You got 75 knots going a little bit low. Push that nose down a little bit. Maintaining that. Anytime a wing drops away, get it back level. Okay. Cool, man. Beautiful airspeed. Very, very nice. So we're past 700. Just look left, clear left. Clear left. All right, give me a t left turn. We'll go 300 zero zero on the heading. So in the climb, yeah. you're gonna feel those left turning tendencies. Yeah. So you can see the ball. Three zero zero. Right? Three zero uh, three zero zero around here. See the ball is outside of the uh, outside of the thing. There you go. Just center that ball up. Step on that ball. Helicopter orbiting at 900 feet. Nice, I see the wrong way, the wing with the wrong way. Yep, there you go. And we're going to level off at uh, 1,300 feet. So once that get range, gets around to the three, that's where we're going to level off. Beautiful airspeed, by the way, and then level off as you get there, because we're at 1,300 feet now. So push the nose down, push it down, more, 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 a lot more, a lot more, a lot more, right there, and then pull the power back. About 2,100, just keep keep the nose set, keep the nose set, don't let that nose rise. Keep it that set. That way it doesn't... So it doesn't keep flying. 13, you said. 13. With the nose is too high. Push it. Push it, push it, push it. Keep that right there. Pull the power back while you're keeping that there. Oh. There you go. Just 21. keep it. Yep, 21. Just don't let it rise. Don't let it rise. Beautiful. About 2100, right about there. And now you can come and trim. So you said to push down? Push down. Trim it down so you don't have to, t uh, you don't have to keep the pressure in there. Yeah, get a feel for it, man. Get a feel for it. It's nice and calm, so you can kind of really feel the plane today. Oh yeah, I like it. So it's a good, uh, it's a good thing. Just keep, keep pushing that nose down. Don't let it rise. Don't let it rise. Force it to do what you want it to do. I'm the boss. You're the boss of it. Don't let it rise. Don't let it rise. Yeah. I think right there is turn. Go hands off. Hands off. Uh, it's Still right. rising, right? Little by little. You'll get it. You'll get it. You'll get a feel for it. Yeah, now it's going down. So now it's going down, so just find that sweet spot. Right about there. You're always going to have to do a little bit of adjusting. Traffic two miles but north. just do me a favor, there's a vent okay. around your leg to the left. Just uh -huh. close that vent if you could. you freezing on my ankles. <laughs> so cold, I got the window open. <laughs> Ready for takeoff. There you go. Nice man. Okay, so we're at 30. We're at 300. But we're still high. We're still high. Just keep this altitude. Uh, we'll, work, we'll work on that. It's just all about being quicker and just keeping that nose there, trimming. But just make sure we don't go above 1600 at the moment. So keeping this altitude is fine. You can feel it. You've trimmed the plane. You're all nice and, 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 uh, and calm. So now you can go through that climb checklist. Okay, so climb, flaps, retracted, retracted. Fuel pumps off, fuel pumps off. Fuel pump off, beautiful. Engine instrument check. All check here. Engine instruments, those ones. Green, green, green. Green, 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 green. And initial climb. 76 knots. We're not climbing at the moment. We leveled off. You'd usually do that coming through a thousand feet, but coming out of exec, you're leveling off fairly quickly after a thousand feet. So you can do fly the plane first, and then go to the checklist. Um, okay. One thing I'm noticing in the checklist, and again, I'm not saying that this is bad. This is a good thing that, that we do it because we're learning, right? When we go through the checklist, the head's down the whole time. So you're flying the plane and heads down, uh, and sometimes it goes off a little bit, like we're off the heading a little bit. So just do a couple of items, then look up, fly the plane. Always fly the plane first. There's this, uh, there's this thing in aviation: aviate, navigate, communicate. Yeah, and the vents in the back are open as well. Jesus Christ, it's cold. But cool. Uh, let's talk about ground reference maneuvers then. Uh, what do you know about ground reference maneuvers? How do you maintain a constant distance around a point? Once you start going around that object, try to look into another one so you. Keep in track. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I like and that. Then obviously you know you got you need to know where your wind is coming from. Why? Because um, on each turn it's going to be different. Depending okay. If you're heading into the wind or yeah. you're coming from the wind. Cool. So you're going to be coming faster. Yep. If you're, the wind is on yeah, the tailwind. Yeah. If you got a tailwind, you're going to be faster. So it, let's say we're doing turns around the point. That first turn because the wind is going to be behind us. Does it have to be steep or shallow? Does it have to be steeper. It's be shallow why because the wind is pushing you no so it's going to be steeper Steeper. Yeah. there you go you logic yeah. to you logic yeah. you, you logic yeah, yeah, your yeah. way out of that one perfect yeah, because you turn it's going to push you exactly so, yeah so then the next turn is going to be less steep 
Less steep, exactly. So, on, on turns around a point, it's kind of constantly changing. So, but what you want to see on turns around a point is a constant bank. You never want to stop the bank, it's just varying the bank angle. I'll show you one before you do one. We'll do rectangular course first though. It's the same thing, same concept, it's just choosing a rectangular area to fly around and we'll go with the downwind. Okay, so pre-maneuver, mixture, bridge, we're going to leave it there. Perfect, yep. Landing lights, on. On, so that's already on. Uh, fuel pumps, on. Fuel pump, just leave that fuel pump off for now. Oh, for now. Yeah. Fuel selector, fuel, fuel, fuel is... So between 600 and 1,000 feet for this altitude, uh, for this maneuver, so start that descent to 1,000 feet. Lake Apoca traffic, uh, Pipe Cherokee 32042 dropping into 1,000 feet, North Shore Lake Apoca doing ground reference, Lake Apoca traffic. So we'll level off at a thousand feet, get it back to that power setting once it is once it is, once it is at a thousand feet. I'll learn to talk one day. Yes it is. Hey, hey man. Welcome to Apopka. No place I'd rather be. Sure. Thousand feet, you trim, beautiful, very, very nice man. So we know that coming off the ground, actually tell me what the wind was off the ATIS sheet. Wind was 340. 340. So book 340. Here. Right there, that'll work. So we know where the wind is coming from. Just watch that altitude, pull it back up to a thousand. We're going to use the roads as a reference here for this rectangular course. Just pull me back up to a thousand. Give me that thousand. You might need a little bit more power. The power is just a little bit low. Retrim is necessary if you need to. If you don't feel like you need to, that's that's okay. But again, this is all just getting in, getting it into your head that you control the plane. If it's not at the altitude we want, fix it. You know. North now. North now, so we're gonna go towards the north and then we're gonna swing it back around and use these these roads as the rectangular course. No one thousand feet. Not thousand feet, perfect. Take that hand off. Use one hand. Okay. Gonna get used to controlling it with just one hand. If you put two hands on there's a tendency to over control. Okay. Um, so we'll just use the one hand. So now we know that the wind is coming behind us. So you said the first turn has to be a little bit steeper than the rest. It, yeah. do, it doesn't mean <laughs> it doesn't mean crank the plane over in the 45 degree bank angle. It's just it's just steeper than the rest of the turns. But look at how how well and nice setup you are from the road. Maintain this distance all the way around. Beautiful. You see where it turns down there? Right here. Just down there. Yep. Yeah. That's where we're going to turn. We're going to follow that road. Maintain a nice distance. You got beautiful altitude control, beautiful heading control. You're in control of this thing. You got it trimmed. You're looking good. Yeah. Good speed, right? Yep. Good speed. Looking, huh. looking fine. So just look using the ground reference. So you know it's got to be steeper. So start that turn. A little bit steeper. Right about there. Should be perfect. And just give yourself some back pressure in the turn. Beautiful. Now you can kind of start rolling that turn out a little bit. I just use that reference, just maintain that same distance around the uh, around the thing. Beautiful. There, nobody's in the bay. So this is the base leg. The wind is coming at us from base. the side. It's base to first. So the next turn would be on onto final. So as if we're turning towards the runway. So this turn has to be just a little bit shallower uh, to maintain the uh, to maintain the radius, maintain the distance. But you've got a beautiful distance. It's perfect so far. So I'm crabbing right, right now. Crabbing a little bit, yep. So now we're turning into the wind so you can make that turn. And then once you're into the wind, you, you should, in theory, need to crab. You get a white archer around four miles to the northeast of the Biggle Tower, 2,800, climbing 3,500, southeastbound, Biggle Drop. Feels cool. Beautiful, yeah, you got it, man. <laughs> you got it. Just maintaining that constant distance from the points. It's perfect, man. It's perfect. It's beautiful. All right, man, my controls. Your controls. You understand that bit. So we're going to do turns around a point. I'm just going to give you an indication, first of all, that crossroads there, yeah. that's the one I'm going to use to turn around. Part of the maneuver is picking a good reference point. So you never want to pick something like one tree in a forest. Yeah. You can't pick it out. Yeah. <laughs> It's beautiful and calm. You got this plane trimmed really nicely, man. <laughs> really nicely. This right here. That right little here. crossroads area yeah. there. And it's a constant turn around that point. So, here's what we're going to do. Set it up on the downwind, basically. Alright, once we're coming around it, here we go. So the first turn has to be a little bit steeper than the rest of them. So it's right right around there. And I'm just using my reference. My, ref, my, my ground reference is the best indicator of the kind of bank that I need. If I need more, if I need less. I'm so just... I don't have to be looking at this? No, 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 no. 
It's just look at the point. Are you closer to it? Are you further away? The wing doesn't have to be on it. Being ahead of the wing is better, so we can see it. But just maintaining a constant radius. I'm always keeping the turn going. Look at this. I've still got a turn going, even though it doesn't feel like we're doing much. I've still got the turn going. I'm going to steepen it up a little bit because I felt like I was too shallow. And I feel like I was moving away from the point, so I'm steepening it up. So now we're moving into the wind. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, now we're going into the wind. I've got this set up and the plane's flying itself in the turn. No, it's not flying itself. <laughs> so now on this side, it's really shallow. So I've still got a turn in there, still got a bank. But you get the point, right? Yes. Okay, well, I'm going to turn it this way. Pick, pick something else, pick another point uh, somewhere, uh, kind of over, over in that direction. Cool, man. So you're in a beautiful position. Turn, turn, yep. Steeper or shallower? Uh, steeper. Steeper, just a little bit steeper. Doesn't have to be too steep. Like that? Uh, maybe a little bit less. See that nose going down now. Yeah. So we got to keep that nose back in the uh, in the turn. Uh, we're losing that lift in the turn, so just maintain it. You maintain a beautiful distance. Beautiful distance around the thing. Just keep that altitude control. Just keep scanning outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, inside. Beautiful distance, man. You're keeping the turn going. You're varying the bank angle now because it's coming. The wind is coming at you from the north, so it's going to be a little bit shallower on this side, which you've got it. You've got it. You got a beautiful distance, bro. Should I just get out? <laughs> should I just leave now? It's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> but this is teaching you the control. You got the control. You're varying the bank angle. You're maintaining altitude. You got a thousand feet. You can feel your, yourself a lot slower on this side. Yeah. So what I would do is I just reduce that bank angle even more, and then once you get around to the downwind side, you can steepen it up again. So if you keep it too steep, you're going to be too close to the point. Beautiful. Now you can start to steepen it up a little bit because the wind is going to start to push us from that side. Beautiful. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Very, very nice. You've got it. And then I got a thousand, right? Thousand, exactly. Go around it again. Do, do another one. Nice. I was trying to impress the teacher. But yeah. <laughs> well, the teacher's Starting. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Good. Hey, you kept a beautiful distance around it. Beautiful distance. On this side, it has to be steeper or shallower. Steeper. Steeper. Exactly as you've got it. So just pull back a little bit because we've got it a little bit steeper. You can see the wind is trying to push us. Like beautiful distance. And then once you're back on the heading that you started the maneuver on, you go away from the maneuver. We're going to do S turns across the road, and this is a perfect road for it here. So I'm going to take it back that way. S turns across a road. You want to start the turn and obviously vary the bank angle steeper at first. And we want to turn 180 degrees and we want to be wings level when we're back over the road. I'm going to wait until I'm wings level directly over the road, right there. Bang, I'm starting my turn. It's uh, just a little bit steeper on this side. Not too steep, doesn't have to be overly steep, but we're just using that ground reference. Keeping it there. And keep, keeping it, kind of, well, kind of varying it, just varying it. The wind is still trying to push us. I'm going to shallow it up now because the wind is coming to our nose. So we're coming over the road and just as we come over it, bang, wings level directly over the road. We immediately go into one to the right. Now it's not a steep turn at first at this one because the wind's ahead of us. So it's trying to push us into it. If we steepen it up now, we're going to go into the road and we're going to be over the road before we're wings level. So we just keep it nice and shallow on this side, nice rudder control. Now at a certain point you'll start to feel it try and push you into in towards the, the, the thing. The road. So you gotta do what? What do we do? Very crab. Not not crab, you just increase the bank angle on this side because now the wind's behind us again. Okay. So I'm gonna steepen it up just a little bit. Because it doesn't feel much, right? It doesn't feel much. But it, it definitely makes a difference because now we've steepened it up, now we're going to come over the road and we're going to be wings level, bang, slap, over the road. Okay, and, and then you exit the maneuver. I should do this for a living. <laughs> That's what I should do. Yes, what you That's what I should do. <laughs> Wait a second, isn't that what you're... <laughs> Is it? Hold on. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> FYI, I'm not actually an instructor. Yeah. Imagine. <laughs> I just like to do it. Yeah, he's like, yeah. the YouTube channel's been a, <laughs> been a lie. It's all done on a green screen. Okay, wings are there, right? Beautiful. Start the turn. turn. Very, very nice. In the turn, what do you do? Pull back a little bit. Pull back. Yeah, kind of use that horizon. Very, very nice. Very nice turn. 
As you turn around into the wind, you can reduce the bank angle. There you go. Just keep your eyes on that horizon as well. Keep that in your scan. Just if it, there you go, pulling that nose up. Beautiful. Just uh, lessen the bank angle a little bit. There you go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Very nice. Just using that reference. At this angle, you're going to be over the road wings level. It's going to be beautiful. It's glorious. Ugh. Oh. Here comes the road. Thousand feet. Wings level over the okay. road. Okay. Now we go to the right. Right, here we go, turning right. Exactly, Scanning. just a shallow bank angle this side because it's going to try and push you in, so shallow it up a little bit more. There you go. Very nice. And then as you turn into the second part of this turn, you can steepen it up a little bit. That is beautiful. So now it's starting to push you, so steepen that back. Yeah, yeah, you can feel it, right? Yeah. Feel you pushing towards it as you steepen it. Just hold the nose up a little bit. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Steepen it up just a little bit more. You can use that reference. So on that second turn, we're, we're past the road now. We're going wings level. So we could have... Uh, Sh it. Steepened it, or I think it would be better to have shallowed the bank angle at first, keep it a little bit shallower, and then uh, and then come for it again. There's the line. Big hole over there. No excuse for that, it's a big rectangle. In the second part of this first episode, you're going to see some slow flight, and hopefully we'll see a stall. I'll see you in the sky. Welcome to the sky, boys and girls. We're back. Cool. Flight day number two. Lake of Pocker traffic, check 32042 Southwest Shore, Lake of Pocker, 2,500 feet, doing really, really, really slow flight. If we pulled the power back now, what's the nose going to do? Pull the power down? Yeah, if we pulled the power back a little bit, the nose is going to go down, right? So, what we have to do, increase angle of attack, so we got to pull the nose up. Aircraft has a what's called a critical angle of attack where it reaches a, a certain angle and all of a sudden the airflow can't go over the wings correctly like it, it stumbles over the wings essentially and that's what causes a stall so at a certain point as we pull back without the power the airplane is going to stall at that angle of attack right the airspeed is going to decrease and the angle of attack is going to get exceeded the critical angle of attack is going to get exceeded and it's going to stall. So to stop that, we have to then add a little bit of power in to maintain altitude. So that's what we're going to do. That's slow flight. That's the basics of slow flight. So it's basically uh, the combination or the, the, the relationship between pitch and power. So pitch for airspeed, power for altitude. Okay. So I want you to pull the power back to about 1700 RPM or so, just for starters, for the slow flight. And I want you to maintain 2500 feet. 17. 17. There you go. Perfect. Right there. That'll work. And just maintain 2,500 feet. Not too much because now you're climbing. So, that, that was too much. Just need just needs a little bit. Just keep this. Get me back to 2,500. It's just as much pitch back as you need. And if you need a trim to help you out, you can do it. But just maintain 2,500. So, what's happened is the power's come back. The nose has wanted to drop, the aircraft wanted to descend, so for us to stop it we increase angle of attack, we increase lift and we maintain altitude. Now the problem is, this comes into play, the airspeed goes down, right? So at a certain point if we have to keep pulling back to maintain altitude, the speed's going to decrease, the angle of attack increases and we're going to stall. Okay, well, We're not trying to stall at this particular moment in time. So what I, what you would do to maintain altitude if, if, is, is trim it, but also add some power. Because we can see we've still got a descent rate and the airspeed's really low. That's the relationship and we're descending. So to stop that descent, give yourself some power. So a little bit extra power, a little bit more. Around 2,000 or so. 1,900, 2,000. That's slow flight. Now you see you added power and you got a, a little bit of a climb rate. Yeah, right That's perfect. Beautiful. Just hold this. We're maintaining You're maintaining it because you added the power. Without that power, we were descending a little bit. See if I can. It yeah. stays there. Yeah, see if it stays there. Give yourself some trip. You're doing slow flight. Boosh! Uh, Boosh! First time. That's it. That's the relationship between pitch and power. So now, if we pitch back, airspeed's going to drop. If we pitch forward, airspeed's going to rise. Say we wanted to descend, you just pull the power back a little bit and you but start descending. And you can feel 
this doesn't have much control here it's not it's it's a little bit mushy you can feel it's not turning as much like that I'm, I'm turning that a lot and we're only just about rocking if we wanted to do a turn you just add some rudder and a little bit of aileron um, to uh, to make the turn so give me a, a right turn let's go to the north clear right yeah, staying with the altitude. staying with the altitude yep so just a little bit a little bit of rudder a little bit of aileron now we can see we've gone a little bit high because I was playing right. with it so uh, to drop altitude, just bring power back just a little bit. And now we're going to go into the wind, so it's going to be really slow over the ground. Ah, just drop the altitude, bring me down to uh, 2,500. And that's not your fault, that was me playing around with it. Yeah. Oh, but it's good, I practice. Yeah, exactly. So just drop the power even more, even more. Because we've got a level vertical speed at the moment, so really drop it back. Bring to idle. There you go. Idle, but maintain the, the airspeed, so you've got a pitch for around 60. So right there, so now airspeed's going a little bit low, so you can afford to drop the nose a little bit. There you go. Just pitch in for that airspeed. Now we're dropping it to 2500. Please be quiet, everyone. And there's 2500, so now you can bring that power back in. Back to around 1900 or so. Keep it going up more, 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 because you still got a heavy descent rate there. There you go, there you go. And now you've got a pitch, you've got to change that pitch because it's going to change the speed. Just uh, look at the ground, look at how slow we're flying over the ground. I know, right? Oh, let's see, we've got a ground speed of 44. There you go, you pitch for airspeed, pitch for airspeed, use this for airspeed, that's for altitude. There you go. Little relationships between pitch and power. 34 knots over the ground. That'll work. A little. A little bit of a climb rate, that's perfect because we want to get it back up. There you go. I'm trim right now. Yeah, you trimmed out, you trimmed out, you're perfect. You're golden. Give me a right turn, we'll do uh, zero, 060. Zero. The other right. <laughs> <laughs> not staying in. Okay. Perfect, nice turn, maintain altitude, maintain airspeed. So altitude's just gone a bit high. So how do we how do we correct the altitude? Perfect, power, there you go, drop it a little bit. All right, and then to recover, you go full power, push the nose over to the horizon, and you're just trying to level off and maintain the, uh, and, uh, the heading. Um, but what well altitude? Uh, just 2,500, and just make sure we're not turning. So you get that nose down, re-trim, because you've got a lot of trim in there. Yeah and uh, just level level the plane back off. There you go, perfect. And now you can pull the power back to a nice cruise and go back to normal, just maintaining 2500. Good job, brother. Uh, My controls? You're in control. My controls. We're gonna do it on northbound, just gonna come around here. Um, just do me a favor and switch the fuel tanks, we'll go left tank. Okay, switching to left, left. Perfect. Pressure's fine. Fuel pump's still on my golden. So I'm just going to take you through the uh, the procedure for, for slow flight with flaps. Okay. This is called slow flight dirty or in the landing configuration because we use flaps for landing. Right. So 2,500 feet. First thing is to take it down to 1,700 RPM. That's a good baseline. I'm holding the nose up a little bit. I'm adding one notch of flaps, one stage of flaps, 10 degrees. We're on the white. Right? White arc, right? We're maintaining northbound 2500. I'm going to bring the second notch flaps in. Looking outside, third notch of flaps. I'm around 65 knots here. I'm going to start adding power up to about 2000 RPM or so. That's going to help me maintain altitude. With full flap? Yeah, with, uh, with full flaps in there. So 2000 feet. And we're in slow flight. So again, we're in another situation on the back side of the power curve. And it's pitch for airspeed, power for altitude. Around 60 knots is good for this. And you're just holding it. Just hold it. If you see yourself a little bit high, which I do, I can drop the power. But I'm keeping just that airspeed. Keep it, right? Exactly. Using this, I'm setting this for 60. And then I'm just powering for altitude. And then very small corrections. Like, it's gone below 60, so I can drop the nose a little bit. It's going to increase airspeed, but also it's going to help me drop this. That's the relationship. We're maintaining northbound. I've got a point ahead of me. So it doesn't matter if it went low here? No. This this is the one that we're doing, but this gives you an indicator of the trend. This is what, what your trend is. So, but I added power again, and that went Hello. to zero, then it's back, and my airspeed's good. Now again, no aileron control. 
So right now you control it with rudder? With rudder, so if I want to do a little left turn, I'm just going to give a little bit of left rudder, a little bit of aileron. And that's about as much of a turn as I'm going to do. And then, let's say we wanted to recover here. Recovery is full power. Nose on the horizon. One notch of flaps. Let it accelerate a little bit. We've still got two stages of flaps in there. Just holding altitude, holding it on the horizon. Second notch of flaps comes out. Above 80, or 75, 80. Last notch of flaps comes out. Back Bring, bringing the power back, exactly. Back to normal cruise, retrim, maintain 2,500 feet. I think you can do it. Let's try it. Let's give it a go. Your controls. Controls. Your controls, give me a right turn, we'll go back to north. It really teaches you that pitch and power, pitch and power. If speed's too low, set the pitch, adjust the power as necessary. If the altitude's too low, too high, adjust the power, adjust the pitch as necessary to maintain a speed. This is giving you the tools for landing, because landing is all about maintaining airspeed. So you're going to drop the power, 1700. 1700. Very nice, cool. Alright, we're within the white arc, one notch flaps. Nice little flaps. Exactly. Boosh. There you go, that's going to give you a little bit of lift, it's going to help you maintain that altitude a little bit. So, second stage of flaps. Just make sure we're not letting that uh, altitude come up too high, the, the flaps give you a lot that's of lift. Uh, not necessarily, keep, keep, the, uh, keep the power back because we've gone too high. So you keep the power back, get the last notch of flaps in. There you go. That's the last one. So now you've got the airspeed, we're just going to let the, the altitude settle around 2500 feet. There you go, you're pitching for that airspeed. Good, 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 good. Pitching for around 60. Perfect. Beautiful. So now your altitude's come back, right? And we're in 60. Perfect. So what do you do to maintain altitude now? Trim. Not trim, because that's pitch. Altitude with power. Exactly. Power. There you go. So you give yourself some power. Maintaining the pitch. Very good. Checking outside for traffic. That's a big thing, because we, we all tend to focus in here when we're doing maneuvers, know, you know? Right. It happens, man. It happens, I still do it to this day, I have to get myself out of it. So we're in 25. 25, perfect. 60. Beautiful. Just going off north just a little bit, take me back to north. So now oh. as you said, rudder. A little bit of rudder, just a little bit of aileron, perfect. Nice. So just take a quick glance at that airspeed. Airspeed's just slightly, slightly low for what I want for today. So, so, so you do that. Now what that's going to do to your altitude is drop it just a little bit. So but you might need a little bit more power. Just a touch. There you go. Everything nice and slow. You're doing, you're doing slow flight. Hey. 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 Good control. But you see the relationship between the between the, the airspeed and the pitch and the altitude of the power. That's what you need to drill in, into your head. Okay. Uh, my controls. You're in control. My controls. We're still on flaps. Still got flaps in there. I'm going to show you a stall. Okay. okay. I'm going to show you how this how this thing stalls. Okay. Now that usually brings up a lot of anxiety in people. How, how do you feel about stalls right now? Are you a bit nervous about it or you're okay? Okay, perfect. So, the main thing in a stall, we've increased the angle of attack so much that the airflow can uniformly go over over the top of the wing. Okay? Because that's how we produce lift with the, with the low pressure on top. So it can't do it. So the wing doesn't fully stop flying, it doesn't fully stop producing lift, but it's not producing enough to keep the, the, the wing up. In your mind, to increase the airflow over the wing, how would you do that if, if the airplane stalls? Uh, try to go do nose down right now. Decrease the angle of attack. Yeah? So you're exactly right. Decrease the angle of attack is, is always the main thing that you do. And what I'm going to show you is that you don't even need power to keep this thing flying in a stall. I'm going to pull the power back because we're already below uh, landing speed. I'm just going to go full idle on the power. And I'm just holding the pitch up, just holding it, holding it. And at a certain point, see how fast this is coming back for me to be able to hold altitude. That's the stall. The nose came down on its own. And look, oh, that was the that was the, that was the drop. And look, I haven't touched the power. I've just decreased angle of attack. And yes, we're descending, but the airplane's flying again, right? So to be able to maintain uh, altitude again, you need, you need to add that power. So you add that full power. You release one notch of flaps, and obviously in this situation that was a landing configuration stall, so we're simulating that we're coming into land and we stall, so we're actually close to the ground, so you want to climb away. So first notch comes out, the second notch only comes out when you've got a positive rate, because you're climbing away from the field. That's the second notch that's out. And let it accelerate. 
and climb away. That was an exaggerated descent uh, in the store, but I just wanted to show you that the angle of attack is key to it. So where are we heading? Uh, three, zero, zero, three, zero, zero, right there. That's what we want to keep during the maneuver. So, 1700 initially. So seven, here we go, 17. 1700, there you go. Drop it back, just maintain altitude, just like slow flight. You can immediately get one notch of flaps in. So, one notch. Stabilize, 2500, same heading, second notch. Stabilize, 2500, same heading. Just climbing a little bit, but that's okay. It's the first time we're doing it. So, last notch flaps. Last, last notch, yep, there you go. And now, hand here. Just simulate a descent, push that nose down, we're going to pretend we're descending in this manoeuvre. There you go, that's fine right there. Okay, so go power back, all the way back idle. And then just hold altitude, just bring this back and just hold altitude. Hold that altitude, hold it, hold it, hold it. You're going to need more and more until it eventually stalls. Bring it all the way back. Just a little bit of left rudder. Oh, and there's the drop. Left rudder, left rudder. Just stop that, because actually hold, hold this right now. Because yeah. if, if we let that wing go, yeah. This plane is going to want to spin away, so to stop it, just left rudder, more left rudder. There you go, you brought the wings back level. So now you recover. Full power. Full power. One notch. And just climb away, perfect. Positive rate, second notch. <laughs> uh, you're accelerating, still climb, still keep the climb coming, we want to get back to 25. Perfect, last notch flaps out, go back to uh, 25 and cruise it out. Simple. These things stall really easily. Like this is a really docile stall. But it's not as uh, abrupt that I was exactly right. Yeah. You, you think about a stall, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go. That's why people uh, have anxiety about stalls. But this, this, like the Cherokees, stall really, really nicely. So yeah, what was happening in there during the stall? You've got uh, there was a there was uh, the the one of the wings dropped. So to stop it, you just bring that uh, you bring that other other rudder in there. My controls, you're in controls. My controls. I'm gonna take it back this way. I'm just gonna give you an indication of how easily you can get yourself out of that wing drop situation with rudder, okay? okay. And show you show you that it works. Because if we don't, if we correct with this, okay. um, it's gonna bring you into a spin. This time, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do it without flaps. I'm just gonna let it kind of stall, and I'm gonna let a wing drop. Wait, idle. Yep, just got it at idle, I'm just pulling the nose up, just holding altitude, just holding altitude, holding altitude. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put too much right rudder in, so you can see. So the airplane wants to stall, that's too much right rudder. So the wing is dropping away. I push the nose down and it's just left rudder to get those wings back level. So I push the nose down, I got the angle of attack back where I wanted it. And I just push the left rudder to stop it from, from, from going over. So. I want to see you do that. Okay. Because that teaches you that you do not use this, this if the if the wing drops. The only thing you're doing with this is decreasing Keeping angle of attack. To get the speed. Exactly. But at a certain point, it's going to stall on you. Keep it coming back. Keep it coming back. There it goes. And recover. Left rudder, nose down. You stop the wing drop. So accelerate. Accelerate, there you go. And then you climb away. Yep, just waiting for the positive. I mean, we got no flaps and back up to 25. We're actually going to start the descent down into Orlando now, anyway. So. You said ease, right? Uh, this, this heading's fine. You can keep this. Heading, it. Yeah. Okay, we're going we're gonna to take it back. Hey. 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 Nice. Good job. So, what I'm going to do uh, for this one, uh, for going back in, I'm going to do the landing. Uh -huh. And I'm going to talk you through how what we just did applies to landing. Uh, just so you can get a visual. Because after this, when we come back out, because we're going to practice slow flight and stalls again. I want to see if I can get you get you landing, landing wow. this thing. Cherokee 042. Uh, well, you're number one now. Number two, five, clear land. Uh, number one, two, five, clear land. Zero, four, two. But a similar distance that, that, that you do for ground reference maneuvers. And you want touch and go we're just going to hold it here, hold altitude for now. We've done everything we need to do. Once we get a beam, once the wing is passing over the 2-5 numbers, 
I'm going to start slowing the aeroplane down. I'm going to bring it to 1700 RPM. You'll see that's a theme. You remember it was 1700 initially for slow flight and stalls. The same thing here. So coming up to 25. So here's the procedure. There we go. 1700 or so on the RPM. We get one notch of flaps in. Nose down. We start that descent, right? We want to maintain around 80 knots. So I've got it to 80 knots. I'm just trying to keep that. We've got a good descent rate. We're descending. We're looking back. We're making sure we're, we're still on the downwind at a nice distance. But I'm at 80 knots. I'm pitching for that airspeed. I'm power. Power for the altitude. So difficult to instruct when you've got people in your ear all the time. Crazy. So now we're going to turn base. I usually turn base just past the lake. But I'm maintaining airspeed. I'm maintaining my descent rate. We're coming in. 80 or so exactly. Now on the base, you want two notches of flaps and you want to get it down to around 75. So there's my second notch of flaps. That's going to help the uh, kind of slow the plane down a little bit. This is bit. base. This is base, exactly. Two, 75 knots, two. got a nice descent rate. I'm going to start turning final because I know the wind is kind of pushing me. Here we go. On final, you're looking for 65 with three notches of flaps. So I've dropped the power back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm adjusting the power. That's 1700 RPM. I'm, a, I'm adjusting it okay, for what I need. We know we're a little bit high because of the uh, because of the pappies, yes. but my airspeed is exactly where I want it. Pitching for that airspeed, I'm increasing the power to hold the altitude. But we're still coming down. Now I'm going to drop it back a little bit. A little crosswind from the right. But here's where that stall comes in. So now I've pulled the power back to idle, and I'm just slowly holding the nose back. And there it goes. That's it. A little bit of uh, right air on correction for the wind. But you see how that slow flight technique and that stall technique both apply to the landing phase. Yeah. It's all that technique. So if you get that those techniques down, you're going to be fine on the landing. Cool. Give me the after landing checklist, please, sir. Okay. Okay. After landing flaps. Retract. Retract. Landing light. Off. Uh, fuel pumps. Off. Mixture. Clean. Uh, trim. Trim. It's going to be reset. How do you feel? I feel confident. Feel confident, yep. Slow, it's just each session is getting just a little bit stronger. Yeah. A little bit stronger. I felt that today. Yeah. Exactly. There's going to be times where I'm reminding you of stuff that's normal, but a little bit stronger. So that was part one of the Road to Flying Solo. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and if so, please leave the video a like and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the rest of the series. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on the Road to Flying Solo.